Welcome back to the News at 10, and we'll take a look at some of the pictures that you sent in to Eyewitness Portal. We begin with this set of images from Isheri North in Lagos State. We see these people waiting to register for their permanent voters' cards. According to our eyewitness, the people came out in their numbers even on a Sunday evening to take advantage of the extension. He urges Nigerians who are up to 18 years to do the same. Next is this image from Makradi, the Benue state capital, showing children walking through a flood, which he says resulted from a heavy downpour that lasted 15 hours. So our eyewitness laments the, that so much water is on the road because of poor drainage. It wants the state government to act fast before it gets worse. Finally is this image from Ndokwa West in Delta State showing the back portion of the road, which our eyewitness reporter says is due to the neglect of the road project. He alleges the project was started by the previous administration of the local government area, but was abandoned shortly afterwards. Thank you for sending in those pictures and please keep them coming. Our women vying for political office stand a better chance of competing successfully against their male counterparts when buying a vote is criminalized in Nigerian politics. That's a standpoint of the National Council of Women's Societies as allegations of vote buying continue to trail recent elections held across the country. The NCWS president, Mrs. Gloria Shoda, stressed this position while speaking in Kwande local government area of Benue State saying elimination of vote buying and thuggery will favor female aspirants. Out of the 109 member 8th Senate of the Federal Republic, records show that there are only seven female members, which translates to 6.42 percent. In the House of Representatives, only 17 out of the 360 members are women, representing a mere 4.72 percent. There are no female state governors, and in the state assemblies, women haven't fared much better. Here in Adipo town of Kwande local government area, it's an all-women affair where one of them is seeking a senatorial mandate for Benue Northeast District. <laughs> Members of the National Council of Women's Societies, led by the president, identify with this ambition as they accompany the hopeful to the podium. How can a woman be empowered? How can the widows and the orphans be empowered? In every household, there is a woman. And that when you take care of any one woman, you have empowered the whole household. However, the women allege that their chances are greatly inhibited by the twin terrors of electoral violence and vote buying. They believe that if these vices are criminalized, the story will be different. So many things are, are responsible for women not being able to participate in politics. One of it is uh, paucity of funds. A lot of, because politics uh, in Nigeria is money politics. But I'm happy that I've heard that buying of votes will be criminalized. So if they do that, it will be very good for us. And secondly, there's too much violence in, 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 in politics, and a lot of women are peaceful people. My call on all women is to know that we have a peculiar position in the society. Men, as good as they are, they don't find it easy allowing women to contest. And it's for we women to give ourselves that chance to prove to men that no matter pos whatever position you give us, we will still be the mother there, the wife there, and the sister there. While women make up almost half of Nigeria's estimated population of over 150 million, this demographic does not reflect in the nation's politics. While it is not certain to what extent their chances will improve if their concerns are addressed, at least it might just encourage greater women's participation in politics. Any restructuring designed to enthrone true federalism in Nigeria can be done using existing institutions as well as the provision of, for amending the 1999 constitution. That's according to the national chairman of the Action Democratic Party. Al-Haji Yabagi Yusuf Sani, speaking on our special political program, Roadmap 2019, Al-Haji Yusuf Sani told Channel Television's Ladi Akiridulwale that there is no need to gather at conferences to produce an entirely new document. Well, you see, you see what has happened is that because all these things are interconnected, 
when you have failure of governance, there's no good governance. People now begin to think, oh, what, what has gone wrong? What do we do? Can we try this one? Can we try that one? You know, so that's why people are, are, are kind of nostalgic. You know, they're looking at the past now. Okay, past, the past it was okay. So can we go back to the past and have what we had before? But that is not the issue. You know, the issue is that the kind of scenario you have today, the kind of actors you have today, you know, the people that the kind of people you have today who are unfortunately at the hems of affairs were not the ones running the, the, the affairs of the country at that time. So the structuring, yes, but I kept telling people that the constitution we have is not a, a, a dead document, it's a living document that you can you can amend it at every point in time. That's why you have what you call concurrent list and you have exclusive, exclusive list. list of the constitution. Meaning that without you going through the pains of bringing people together to come and discuss, no. The ones you have elected already, they have the powers. You can watch the full interview with the, the national chairman of the ADP, Haji Yabagi Yusuf Sani, on Roadmap 2019, tomorrow, Monday, August the 27th at 9 p.m., only on Channels Television. There have been reports of flooding in some states across the country despite an early prediction of normal rains by the Nigerian Meteorological Agency. Our next report focuses on the plight of residents of floodplains as the rains appear to be falling more these days. The Nigerian Meteorological Agency's prediction of normal seasonal rains this year appears to be stretching beyond the normal. A normal, the earlier the normal onset, normal cessation and normal rainfall are found in many parts of the country. Also, dry spells during the rainy season may be more frequent and severe in some parts, while the little dry season in some parts of the south are expected to be pronounced. Perhaps the definition of normal rain is misconstrued. States like Ogun, Kaduna, Edo, Anambra, Kano, Katsina and Bochi have all had their share of the ravaging effect of flooding following heavy rains. The end result is usually devastating. While some are lucky, others always have a horrific tale to tell. Nimitz's call for caution may have been heeded by some. And those who did not have had to struggle with the wrath of nature as their houses are either swept away or they have been forced to seek shelter elsewhere until the water subsides. The flood devastation of 2017 has left a mark, but Nimet's assurance of normalcy this year may have given room for laxity in some states where losses are now being counted. But in the light of the reported disasters so far, the days ahead may be more scary. Perhaps this will be a better time for everyone on floodplains to prepare for the unforeseen, as the downpour may be heavier than expected. Our rice farmers in nine local government areas of Adamawa state are crying out to the federal government to come to their aid uh, following the loss of their farms as a result of heavy flooding resulting in the farms being submerged. The farmers who are beneficiaries of the federal government's anchor borrowers program are appealing to the authorities to intervene by looking into their plight. Adamawa State and the Rice Farmers Association have a challenge on their hands, which is a collective problem the state faces. Rice farms submerged by flood. The flood waters here where the rice paddies used to be in nine local government areas, including Demsa, Lamurde, Gire, Fufore, and Shele as the river Benue overflows its banks. Normally, I used to cultivate about uh, two hectares of land, and I used to get up to 60 bucks in these uh, two hectares of land. 
but uh, this year I cannot even get half back. You can see it there. I cannot even get half back of rice. So actually it is uh, disastrous. I cultivated 3.5 hectares of land for this rainy season. And at first, the input we received from Rifan, they were really qualitative input and the prospect was there and we got all the necessary support from them. So we took off, we planted, we weed our farm, we put in all the inputs we got. Everything was greenish, everything was promising. But uh, it's quite disheartening. We wake up one day and so unprecedented flood taking over our farms, destroying everything. It's a threat to crop yield and projected rice production in the state. Therefore, the branch manager of the Nigerian Agricultural Insurance Corporation stresses the importance of indemnity. We've been trying to enlighten farmers to ensure that their farms are insured, so against this kind of perils. And uh, I've seen everything, and uh, by the grace of God, we'll do whatever we can do to help the farmers back to where they were before. The Chairman Rice Farmers Association also explains the input distributed to farmers through the Anchor Borrower Scheme. This season we have distributed inputs and implements to 7,282 farmers. And these nine local government, we have about 3,526 members from this nine local government. So our major farmers are from this part of the states. So they, are, they have been hit with this, not only the 3,000, also the 586 farmers that benefited from the rain, uh, dry season of last season. The, the Anko Borrower Scheme is, is cashless. And what we mean by cashless, we will give you inputs and implements. What uh, to, uh, 219,000 for one hectare farm. So, and mainly the Anko Boros program is for a smallholder farmer. That is from 0 0.5 hectare, one hectare up to five hectares. So uh, these are farmers that benefited. And these are the farmers that we hit by this natural disaster. The use of these farm equipment cannot be appreciated if the flooding persists. And with reports that the water in the Lagdo Dam will be released soon, it will exacerbate the flooding. Therefore, it's imperative urgent steps are taken to reduce the impact on the farming communities. Still ahead on the news at 10, Chelsea and Watford continue their perfect record in the English Premier League with three wins from three games. We'll have more in sports news. Stay with us. Thank you.